Hi, good morning. I'm Sue Parker, data leader, mum of two, and hopefully educating you a little bit more so that you can be empowered. Today, I want to talk all about identity and how we cling on to false identities or bad identities, identities that don't serve us, like I can't do that, I'm no good at this, I'm shy, I'm not great at the other, I would like to go and do something but I'm probably not going to go and do something. Those sorts of identities that hold us back because there's a lot of research, a whole lot of research that shows that if you believe something to be your identity, you're more likely to behave in that way. Here's a really simple example. You could say, I'm going to go for a run. So that's, I'm going to go for a run. The chances are you might not pack your gym shoes. You might not go for the run. You might be tired. It might be raining. You might just not do it today. You might start tomorrow. You're starting tomorrow, then the day after, then the day after. But if your identity is I'm a runner, then you will start to behave more like a runner because you've adopted the identity. Now, it's really not that simple, but you start to change your mindset about how you feel about yourself. Now, here's some examples that I want to use in a business or work context or even a social context. And that is, I'm not very confident. I hear this a lot. I'm just not confident. I can't go out there. I'm quite introvert. What if you tell yourself instead that I am confident and that's part of my identity is I'm confident in those situations. I'm confident in this situation. I will be confident when I have done this and you start to adopt that belief instead about your identity. And then you start to behave more and more in line with that identity. So identity is a really good tool that you can use to start to try and behave in the way that you want to become for whatever job. You know, I remember before I even became a leader, I just started to view myself as a leader. I am a leader. It's kind of like, I might not have that title, but I'm already a leader. That's what I do. I lead projects, I lead things, I can organize things and people, and I can make things happen. So therefore I must be a leader. And I adopted that, that identity and then later on became a data leader. So it's quite interesting how even though you're not aware of it, once you've decided that's who you are, that's your identity, you start to behave in that way regardless of everything else that might actually be contextually opposing to that. But it does make it more difficult if everything opposes it. The only thing I want to add to this is another layer of depth here in that we don't want like this massive identity. You know how people will talk to you about how you need to know everything about who you are, what you do. And I want instead you to think about keeping this really loose identity. So I'm a data leader, I'm an educator, it's a fairly loose identity. I'm a mum of two, that's a really important piece for me. But I don't want to then sort of surround myself with lots and lots and lots of words that restrict me, that keep me in a box, that keep me in a cage. Because we've got to remember our identity is constantly evolving. Think of Taylor Swift and how many times she has rebranded herself, repurposed herself. And she's done that because she's kept evolving and she's not tied herself to the identity of the person that she once was. Another great example from the pop scene is Miley Cyrus. It's just really easy to use celebrities, isn't it, for this? Uh, Miley Cyrus, who was Hannah Montana, she didn't hang on to that identity all the way through her career. She wouldn't be who she is now had she done. So bear in mind that your identity is there, but it can be loose. It can be redesigned and remolded as you go. The key thing is that your core principles, your values, you tap into your internal compass that stays with you. And, and that might be simply being kind and having, you know, a set of values that mean you live by those, regardless of the fact that your identity this week is I'm a runner. And I go from being a runner or being a healthy person to being a runner. I might go from being a runner to being a sprinter to being a swimmer. That's OK. <laughs> They're all evolving and changing with each new target and goal and thing you want to achieve and grow and do. It doesn't matter. They, they, those things can adapt and be flexible. Using your identity is a really clever way to sort of almost persuade your brain, if you like, to start to carry out the behaviours that it feels are more in tune and in line with the identity that you're assuming, but also try and keep really close to those core values. So hopefully that's given you something to think about when you're labelling yourself or when you're thinking of a I am identity statement and maybe you could jot down three of your identity statements now that positively frame who you are. So I am an ex-smoker becomes I am healthy. 
Maybe we don't want to associate with the negativity of the smoking. Maybe you want to do something else. You know, I am whatever your aspiration is. I am this. I am that. I am a great mum. Instead of telling yourself you're a bad one, whatever it is, let's try and reframe the identity in a positive, proactive focus that means we start to behave more like that. Tell me how you get on with this because I find this a really profound piece of research and also quite interesting when I'm reflecting on my career and also on my life really, how I've kind of used it and not even been aware that I've used it. So have a fantastic week folks and don't forget to drop me a comment here or over on the blog. It's suparker.io. Take care.